is that the United States Federal Reserve is an independent organization, somewhat apolitical. I know that's open for debate. But that it isn't at the direct behest of politicians, as you see in so many other countries, where it's almost always in politicians' interests to inflate the money, to increase the money supply. And in countries where you've seen politics in their Federal Reserve banking systems, their central banking systems overlapped, you see bad things happening, and he suggests this would be a step in that direction. Look, th there are examples of what you would hope, and I think are generally nonpartisan, uh, large bureaucracies in this country. I mean, the Central Intelligence Agency, I'd like to think, is one of them, where it's about the mission, it's not about who's in the White House at any given time. And that's why you do see, and this is true also with the Pentagon, you do see, for example, presidents keep on people who were there with their predecessors because they want, it's supposed to be about more than the sort of the, the current politics of the time. But I think part of the problem here is that people have lost faith faith in Mr. Bernanke and his institution and want answers. They're supposed to manage inflation. They've done, uh, believing the numbers, they've done a good job of that. They're also supposed to manage employment. They have not done a good job of that. And a lot of people, and again, you cited some polls, the polls show that people think that this recession, yes, it was very bad, but coming out of it, it has not been but strong I disagree, enough. Buck. I, the Fed is not there to get people jobs. I mean, they're there. Uh, they, look at the, dual they look at the unemployment numbers, but they're not really there. They, their hands are tied when it comes to the, the White House with overregulation over taxes, that has more effect on jobs than monetary policy does. But, I mean, that is part of their dual mandate, is managing inflation and trying to actually help employment. This is trying to get the U.S. But, to but, full but employment. But, again, their hands are tied when, when you have the federal government out there right now with overregulation over taxes. It, it doesn't matter if you lo lower interest rates. They've lowered interest rates to try to increase employment. It doesn't work when you have the federal government so against you. Here's the question I have. What is it that Ron Paul thinks that he might find? Usually you have an audit of this nature if you think there's been political corruption, corruption, influence peddling. In this case, the Fed is really a tool, an instrument, and we can see very precisely what decisions it's made. If it's raised the interest rate, lowered the interest rate, you can debate whether or not that's good policy. What beneath this very obvious transparent activity of the Fed does Ron Paul hope to uncover or unearth? Well, I don't know that Ron Paul uh, has specific ideas about nefarious activities that he might think exist within the Federal Reserve. I the think author of End the Fed <laughs> does not have I think rather but I think rather Ron Paul's objection is to the existence of the Federal Reserve and that it is a, that it is an inherently anti democratic institution. But would auditing their conversations and deliberations shed any light on that? Or Maybe. you can just you know debate why does this institution exist? Do we need it? Do we like these policies? You can certainly, you know, criticize Alan Greenspan for keeping interest rates low and then inflating housing prices, leading to the housing bubble. Uh, those seem to me to be very, you know, reasonable, legitimate areas. If you don't agree made. with somebody, it doesn't mean they're doing something wrong. You may Correct. not agree with what they're doing. And I do not agree with Bernanke, but it does not mean he's breaking law or unethical. He just isn't doing but a good there, job. There are also people who say, and they usually murmur it kind of quietly, that some of what the Fed does that's supposed to be confidential maybe gets out to certain major players before it gets out to the rest of the public. In fact, some major market moving information could be, I mean, just look at the so revolving door. Of insider trading sort well, what's, of what's insider trading? I mean, they have to talk to counterparties about some of the transactions they're engaging in. I mean, and I think that, yes, when you look at the, the profits of a lot of the major proprietary desks, tell me if you think this is way off base, but the prop desks at a lot of these firms, which, by the way, have tried to be reined in recently by the Volcker Rule and others, they were making enormous bets based upon things like interest rates, and they tended to do very well and make huge sums of money on this over and over again. And by the way, you know, there's a very cozy relationship relationship between the Fed and the banks that are supposed to be getting so this, be this criminal, fiat currency that they're supposed to be lending out. Wouldn't that be a criminal investigation, if true? Earlier, you said uh, it's the dog and pony show. Would you expound upon that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, first, this is probably some of my Ron Paul filter coming out. Um, Ron Paul likes to grandstand. He likes to make a big show. And I think this idea and why it has so much congressional support um, is a way to say, well, we're going to do something. We need to do something. Um, and, and we see that all the time. I mean, it was the biggest argument for the stimulus. Well, we have to do something. We heard this played out over and over and over again. And when you're sort of out of answers, you come together and you say, what can we do that's a big distraction, that looks really good, that looks like we're taking this seriously, that holds people accountable, calls for more transparency and disclosure. We all know those are good words. Um, I'm not sure that this is going to amount to anything. I mean, like you said, Matt, I'm not sure this is going to produce anything. The fact that Ben Bernanke's 
wary of it, I don't think indicts him or the Fed. I think this is a guy who's used to being independent. Leave me alone. We have independent auditors who are going to take care of this. And stop sort of uh, uh, politicking so, around this So there's this no bureau. there's no chance this will expose an all too cozy relationship between the Federal Reserve, which by the way is staffed with people who oh. I don't know come from Goldman Sachs Fuck. and other firms, I have and then go back out on the other side. I mean, there's, there's I have suggested there's at this table problems. more than once that there is a very cozy relationship between the Fed and the White House. A a absolutely. No, no, uh, the Fed and Wall Street. I'm talking. Oh, about. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's true as well. I mean, maybe that's true as well. I, mean, I, I have made that suggestion before. We seem to dismiss out of hand the idea but, that some of this very important information, incredibly valuable information that the Fed has about what's going to happen is somehow kept in these close but quarters. But nobody finds Washington out about it. There are leaks from but the they National know Security about it. No, it's about when they know. They know before Main Street knows. People who are making big market decisions on this are finding out ahead of but time. That's, I life. Think that, that, that's everything. You tell me when Apple's earnings come out tomorrow night. That's some so you're okay with already? you're okay with people that are running it's hundreds, not hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars in hedge funds, knowing before guys who are trying to invest for their IRA.